Okay, this is the second part of a series, and I'm working in Blender 2.16, and I really recommend you watch the first video in this series, because we're going to be repeating a lot of stuff, and I'm going to be going a lot faster. But basically, last time, we took an image and did a little... Oh, I'm not recording yet. Okay, this is the second part of a video tutorial, and uh, I really recommend you watch the first part, because we're going to be repeating some stuff, but going a little bit faster. Um, but basically, last time, we took a still image and did a little pan and zoom on it in Blender. Well, today, we're going to make it kind of a little more generic, and then we're going to write a script that will automate it for us, uh, allowing us to take a folder full of images and uh, create pan and zoom clips of each one that we can later combine together in a slideshow. Um, so basically making our own little preset here. Um, now, if we, um, first things first, we have to take a image that we're going to start working with. Now let me flip over here. You can see I have got uh, five images in the folder here. I'm going to take one of them. I'm going to control C it and split the screen here. I'm going to go to my temp folder and I'm going to paste it in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to call it uh, b3dss.jpg uh, for Blender 3D Slideshow. Uh, but of course you can name it whatever you'd like. So now that we've created that little temp file that we're going to be able to replace later on with the rest of the images, we can move back to Blender here. And let me quickly turn on screencasting here and close that little window there. I'm going to delete default cube here. And I'm going to hit spacebar, type in plane and import a shadeless. I'm going to go to uh, my temp folder here and find that file we just created here, uh, b3dss.jpg. And I'm going to import the image as a plane. Right now we can't see the image if we hit uh, this button here and change our viewport uh, to textured. We can now see the image. I'm now going to hit R to rotate it, X to lock into the X axis, and type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. One on the number pad, and scroll to zoom in. There is our image, just like last time. And I'm going to type in spacebar camera here, and choose align camera to view. So here is our camera right here. So what we need to start doing now is making our movements. So let's get our scene a little more set up like we did last time. Um, I'm going to set it to HDTV 1080p, but of course pick the resolution that you prefer. And I'm also going to do 30 frames a second. I'm also going to turn off anti-analyzing. Um, that's really not necessary since we're not working, we're not looking at the edge of objects, and that will speed up our rendering slightly by uh, removing that. Also, I'm going to change it to 150 frames for our project because I want each clip to be 5 seconds, but of course adjust it to however long you want each image to last. Next, I'm going to choose uh, XVID here, and as I said before, if you're working with uh, Blender 2.61, you're also going to have to choose this preset here and choose XVID, or, of course, whatever format you prefer, and you can also adjust the settings to increase or lower the quality based on your project. Also, I'm going to change, uh, choose the name of the output file, and I'm going to create it, I'm going to put it in my temp folder, and I'm going to call it uh, b3dss.avi. Perfect. Now at this point I can save what we've got so far. So I'm going to click Save As and I'm going to save it into the same folder I have the images saved. You don't see them here but I'm in the folder that I have the images saved in. And I'll call it um, b3dss.blend. It will automatically put the dot .blend for me. Now all we have to do is create our animations, but we're going to create a couple of scenes. So let's create the first one here. Uh, and right now we're kind of zoomed in a little bit. I kind of like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit I to lock in a keyframe. There I am at the first frame. And then I'm going to hit Shift, right arrow to jump to the last frame. And I'm going to grab, center click, and zoom out. And of course, like I said, oh, let's not forget to set our keyframe again there. So we have two keyframes, one at the very beginning and one at the very end. We can hit Alt-A to see that animation. But once again, I like to keep the speed of the camera consistent rather than slow, fast, slow, all depending on the look you're going for. So I'm going to change this view here to a graph view. And um, before we're making this full screen, but really we can just hit T 
and choose linear and now the movement is pretty straightforward. We've got one of our animations done. Luckily the rest of it's pretty much copy and pasting but first I'm going to rename this scene just by selecting here to one. Now I can hit this plus symbol and I'm going to do a full copy so we create a new scene and I'm going to call it two. Now I'm going to change the animation up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over here, uh, our graph view here, and I'm going to hit delete and delete frames. So we deleted all our keyframes. What I'm going to do now is go to our first frame and set another keyframe. And then I'm going to grab and zoom in a little bit. Now remember, we're trying to be a little generic with this. Um, so don't zoom in too much because you don't know where people or objects are going to be inside the image. So if you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. We're trying to make it very generic. Uh, but uh, jump to the last frame, and now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and hit I to lock the, the animation for that. And once again, hover up here, T, linear. And every once in a while, Control S and save your project. So now we have two scenes. Uh, the first one was starting in close and zooming out. This one's starting out and zooming in. The order that we create them in does not really matter because it's going to be random when we write our script. But I'm going to say plus full copy. And what I'm going to do here, once again, I'm going to hover over here, delete, delete all our keyframes. I'm going to grab on the x-axis, move this to here, set our keyframe, move back to the first frame, grab and move it over here and set another keyframe and once again T and make them linear. And I'm going to change this scene to be three. I hope you see what I'm doing here. I'm going to say plus full copy. I'm going to name this scene four. I'm going to delete all our keyframes, grab, I'm going to start up in the top corner here of the image, set a keyframe and then we're going to grab on the last one and move it down to here and set a keyframe and once again T and make it linear. I'm going to save that. Now of course you can make as many different animations as you'd like. I'm just going to stop at four because that's all I need now. Now if you're not familiar with Blender, what I did may have seemed a little complicated but really it's not. We're doing the same thing over and over again so once you learn the five steps you just do it over and over again, making different animations. So what we can do now, now that we've saved that, we can quit out of Blender. Because you can render Blender um, from the command line. So let me see, I'm going to list out here. You can see in this folder, I've got my five images, all these JPEGs. And then we got our blend file and also blend one, blend two. Each time you save your project, Blender makes a backup copy. So if you want to go back, revert back to it. So we can you just ignore those. Those are basically temporary files. Um, but if we type in Blender, if you have Blender installed, dash dash help, you can see that there's a lot of command line options. And they all have to do, some of them have to do uh, with video game uh, uh, engine. But the rest of it ha can also do with rendering from the command line. And if we look here at the first few options, we have dash B, background. This will allow you to run a Blender file in the background without the GUI coming up. So basically B and then the name of our file, which in this case is b3dss.blend. Next, we're going to render an animation, dash A. And then we're also going to set our scene, which has to go before the dash A. That's a little confusing uh, if you don't realize that. It confused me at first, and I'll explain that in a moment. You can also do other things from the command line as far as setting a first and last frame. Uh, you can also choose what format you want to render out to. But if you leave all that blank, it goes based on what we have already set within the blend file. And also dash O, which is our output file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a script it's going to be maybe five lines. It's going to create a folder, then look at all the JPEGs inside this folder, copy one at a time to our temp folder over our temporary JPEG that we made at the very beginning of the tutorial, and then render it out to a random scene. We have scenes one, two, three, and four. Um, and each one is a different animation. So it's going to grab a random animation, save that to our temp folder, uh, which we set within our blend file, and then take that and copy it to our clips folder with a timestamp. 
Like I said, if you're familiar now with Bash, this is going to be very familiar with you. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. I'm going to call this b3dss.sh. And I'm going to say this is a Bash file, so bin Bash up there, our shebang line. And we are going to, first off, make a folder for all our clips to go into, and we'll call it Clips. Then we're going to say 4i in all JPEG files. Now, this is case sensitive, so you may have to change this. Like if you're working with PNGs uh, or other formats, bitmats or whatever, you're going to want to change this to match whatever file extension. You can also uh, check all file extensions. My camera saves them as JPEG with capital JPG. So in this case, I'm typing it with a capital JPG. But once again, those are minor things that hopefully you're familiar with. But we're doing a, a do loop, uh, or a for loop, and we're going to loop through each of our images and set the image to our variable i. Then we're going to say copy, so we're going to leave the original where it is, but we're going to copy our image file and replace the temp file that we are already created. b3dss in our temp folder dot jpeg and now I'm going to say once we've copied it, then we can just run Blender, but dash B in the background, and use our Blender 3D dot blend file, which is in our current directory. Uh, then we're going to say dash S for scene. Now, this is where we're going to use a little variable, and we have to get a random number from 1 through 4. So what we're going to say is uh, dollar sign, and then parentheses, space, dollar sign, random, which would give us a random number, but we're going to say percent four. That means go to four, but we start counting at zero. So right now we would have zero, one, two, and three. We want one, two, three, and four, so we're going to add one to whatever number that outputs. Uh, next, we're going to say close our parentheses, dash A for animation. Um, we don't have to set an output file because we already set one in Blender to save to our temp folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that once it's rendered out. So the file it created, um, b3dss.avi in our temp folder. And we're going to copy that to our subfolder here. And we're going to say date plus percent s. And I'll explain that in a moment. And I did two parentheses there. I only want one. Dot AVI. And we're done. This is our script. What it's doing here is it's copying the rendered image to our clips folder. And it's going to name it basically a timestamp so that each one will be in order alphabetically and also numerically. Uh, and that's it. All we have to do is save that, change mod plus X to make it executable. And now at this point, anytime I want to render uh, clips for any images inside a folder, I just have to copy the bash script and the blend file to that folder and run the script. And right now you can see what it's doing is it's creating that temporary video. It's already created our temp folder, our clips folder, copied the first image over. Now it's rendering the video. When the video is done rendering, it throws into our clips folder, starts all over again with the next um, uh, image, and each time grabbing a random scene, one through four in this case, to uh, get random animations. So uh, that's it for this tutorial. I will, at the end here, put all the clips in order and play them for you one at a time. And in the next tutorial, we'll use Blender again, but you can use whatever video you editor you want to maybe do a fade from one to the next in the uh, video editor within Blender. So uh, once again, this may seem complicated to someone who's unfamiliar with Blender, but once again, if you watch it a few times, just do it a few times, it's repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Thank you again, and I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That is Chris with a K, and I hope that you have a great day.